Hello everyone, it's me Ari Dossett, you just call me Rashid. Let me look how it looks like on... Okay, that's good, you can see me clearly, hear me clearly. At least I hope. Can you please? Okay, according to my mobile phone here, when I can see the live stream also, you can should be, be able to hear me clearly. But please confirm to me, can you hear and see me clearly, please? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know if you can hear and see me clearly, please. Let me know. Okay. Let me know in the live chat, please. Okay, that hears me clearly. The rest is here. Let's help me know too. All right. Now, I'll begin. It's me, Ari Dossi, Shukam Rashid. I'm an anthropologist and sociologist. And at the beginning, I want to mention three terms that are used in sociology often. Let me know if you can, if you can you see them. No, I need to bring this down a little bit. Okay, the right over there. The terms are manifest function, latent function, and dysfunction. Now, in sociology, you study and investigate the group dynamics in society. In anthropology, you examine and reveal the, the roots philosophy of the public that makes things happen. So a sociologist doesn't look that much at the core motivations in the population. We look at the dynamics. So if sociologists talk about motivation, they talk about incentives from the group. Anthropologists go deeply to the spiritual of it. Now, now, this are sociolo terms of sociology. Now, what is a manifest function? A manifest function is a function in your face. This is why we do things. For example, you have a bin over there. What, what's a bin for? Well, you put trash and garbage in it. Trash, garbage, rubbish, with all in a bin. Okay? So, a bin, well, you know what a bin is for. It's a manifest function of the bin. A uh, dysfunction would be if it's trash all over the streets. If you walk around there's trash everywhere, well, that's a dysfunction, obviously, because it's bad for the environment and it's a uh, horrible look, so it's dysfunction. So, uh, so putting a, gar a garbage can or bins over there is a manifest function they want you to put all your trash in there. That's a manifest function. What is the latent function of having bins over there? That people feel like their community it's not taken care of. Because look, if there's trash ever on the streets, you're not gonna be happy because of that. If there are bins over there, the manifest function, the superficial reason is you want people to throw trash in there. A later function now becomes, okay, because people keep throwing trash in the bins, the bins have to be uh, emptied and, and, and put back again. So now, you, now there is employment. Now you can create jobs for, tr for trash men to come pick up the, the trash or whatever. So, the employment for the people that renew the, the, the bins, that's a latent function. They don't put those bins there to create employment, but employment comes as a result of it. So a latent function is often an esoteric, um, we'll say, side effect of an uh, action taken, while the manifest function is the immediate reason why people say they do things. Now, the manifest function sometimes is just, a, is just an excuse. For example, people may say, uh, people may, there may be more police on the streets during weekends. And they ask, why are there so many police officers on the streets? People say, well, it's there to keep order. That's a manifest function. But then you notice that the weekends are burning people on the streets. So why are there so many police officers that are burning people out there? They realize one minute, this doesn't end up. They look at the latent function, because there are so many police officers on the streets. People feel like, you know what, we can't challenge the, the system. So let's all behave. That's a latent function. Well, that stuff is a dysfunction because people don't dare to challenge when something is wrong. So you see what I mean? So these are the three sociological terms I wanted to address to you. Hold on. Let me try to put this camera straight here. One moment, so you all. Before I continue, is this clear to you about the functions? Let me know. Wait. I don't know if this all clear onto you. 
because it's an important topic. Okay, this is much better. It's all clear onto you. The, the explanation of manifest function, latent function, and this function. Let me know in the live chat. It's quite important for you to understand for the next part of the live stream. It's all clear to you. Let me know in the live chat, please. All right. Let me see. If it's not clear, let me know also, please. Thank you very much. But, um, okay, let me see. But just in case, I'm going to repeat one more time. A manifest function is a superficial explanation why something is happening in society. The latent function is a side effect or sometimes the true reason why that thing is there, why things is happening, and this function sort of simply doesn't work properly and it causes harm to the community in the long run. All right? Now, let's go to this over here. Um, let me put this back. Let's go to this over here. What is this? This is a, this is a triangle and represents a pyramid. I will explain how society is established, okay? Society consists of the three layers, social layers. You have the elite, which are the priests, or you just call them the priesthood. Because elite, El, is another term for God. So elite means those who are associated with God. Well, the elite often are not really serving that before Father, but just so you know, the elite are the priesthood. They're at the top. They have all the knowledge. Not literally all knowledge out there, because they're not God, but you have all the human knowledge possible about how community should work, for human sexuality, human health. They have deep knowledge. At the bottom, you have the majority of the population, which is, in many cases, around 98% of the population. Well, in modern day times, it's not 98%, maybe it's something like 90% then. But often it's 90 or 95%. You have 1% at the top of here, which are the priests. No, not even 1%. 0.1% are the priests. Priesthood, and then you have 9.9%, .9%. in some cases only uh, 4% in some cases, but in the rest of the 9.9% of population, which is in between. The laborers, or in ancient times, used to be called the slave class. That's the majority of the population, people without any power and without leverage. They are without power or leverage. Okay. Then if you pull at the elite, we have the leverage. And the people in between are competing. Okay. This is how society is established. So say we're cheating, we have the elite and you have the working class, it's not true. You always have this little space in between where people are competing all the time. I'm going to explain to you why that exists. Hold on. So, it goes like this. The priesthood, they use ritual victimization to put dormant psychological fright, but also the sexual pause, in the public. The priesthood, which are the, del the Satanists, sometimes even the pagans, they come together and they agree we need to put some dormant sexual, psychological fright in the public to do some racial victimization. Because of this, you develop a trauma bond with those around you. Okay? Let me give an example of one example of racial victimization, make an example of someone. Let's say 
you walk into a you have this guy walk into a, a, a walk into a bar. He walks there. People people look at him and think your hat is a bit weird, man. He, he carries this weird hat. Someone comes up, dude, why, why is your hat so 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 weird? He picks up a gun and shoots the guy in the head. The guy falls down and dies. What do you think the effect's going to be? People are going to think what? The guy just asks him why does his head look does his head look so weird? And the guy's not dead because he just shot him with a gun. And people think, hold well, on, man, he still has the gun. He only has four bullets left. We are over 50 people in here. One of us has been killed. That means there's still a chance one of us can die one of those four bullets. You know what? Instantly, people get terrified and they just don't question the guy anymore. The guy wants something to drink, they don't even charge him. Whatever. That guy now has with everyone in dormant psychological fright. They're not afraid all the time, but the fear is dormant in the, in the mental. This harms their sexual health also. That's why they're on the sexual pulse. Now, in this case, do you think anyone else will ever call out something about this man who just shot someone for questioning him? No, because he made an example of the other individual he killed. Now, can he continue to make an example? No, because at some point he runs out of bullets. But at some point, people, let's say, okay, let's use a different example. The same guy walks in with his weird hat. He walks in, someone asks him, dude, why do you have this weird hat? And he tries to shoot him. But guess what? Right uh, before, uh, when he's about to shoot him, he gets shot. But someone else knows him trying to get a gun. Now, he's not dead, but he's, he's, he's now on the floor. So he thought he could just shoot anyone who questioned him, but someone else shot him uh, when he didn't know about to do it. He was not the only one with a gun around. There were more people with guns and were skilled with guns. So that guy couldn't make himself out of no one. Instead, it backfired that he became the example of what not doing in, 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 in that town. So in any case, make yourself of someone. It also happened in school. For example, there was one child that was, 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 uh, didn't, sh didn't shut their mouth, and the teacher humiliated the child. All our children got uncomfortable, and nobody wanted to be associated with the child being humiliated. So everyone just developed this tendency to obey authority. Anyway, make yourself of someone is ritual victimization to on the public. You have something you don't want people to question, and because of that, you put danger on anyone who, who comes near to question it. As a result, nobody wants danger to to them, so they're more likely just to not discuss the thing you uh, don't want uh, the, to be challenged. So racial victimization, that is what the priesthood does to the public. Now, if you only, make, if you only put this dormant psychological fright in people, eventually people are going to see through it and lose their mind on you. So, for example, you, you have a classroom, okay? There's one child without a school uniform. You ignore that child throughout the day as a teacher. All the children get uncomfortable. What is, the, what is the reward here? The reward is if you wear a uniform, you get treated as a human being. So because none of the children want to be treated as less than human, they all come with a clean uniform every day in school. So that's a superficial reward that you offer them. Or let's say now um, there's a labor market and there is a request uh, for people to be light-skinned. Okay, let's say this light skin or whiteness thing is a fetish in the society. If you are a company and hire someone from Nigeria who's dark skinned, it can be suddenly that people stop coming to your shop because you feel offended. Now, nobody wants to end up like your shop. So what happens now is that other shops see this happening and they hire light skinned or European people. And guess what? The public also goes to their shops now. So now that becomes like a superficial word. You give in to the to the idol of the public, they either leave you alone or give you a pat on the back. You question their idol, force them to look at themselves, they explode on you. Then you want to make an example out of you. So racial victimization is something the public does amongst each other also. They all do it to children too, but it's something that a lead or the prison do to the population as a whole. They make an example out of certain victims, then they give some official words for compliance, compliance and at any time, anyone questions the whole ritual through victimization, the public turns on them. Not the elite, but the public gets in up because the public does what the Facebook goes on. All right? So the public
public has static expectations, so they have zero flexibility. Let me tell you why. If you if you've been humiliated today, and you have no nothing to fight back, no leverage to stop it, and tomorrow you have leverage, that means you still remember how you were humiliated, how people didn't they didn't didn't help you out. You don't want to remember the one who humiliated you. Go to remember nobody, no one of you, you help me out. So now that you have the leverage, you can call people out on it. So people don't want you to suddenly have leverage while well, yes they had no leverage because they know you're going to remember how they neglected you and you may use your leverage to take action against them so that's why the public wants zero flexibility if you're born poor you die poor if you're born in riches you stay in riches now social mobility does exist the public has no problem with social mobility from upwards downwards you were born in riches and now you end up homeless but if you were homeless, which could be neglected by community, and now you're a millionaire, it's something the public cannot stand because that means you're giving hope to people that things can improve for the better. But if people want things to improve for the better and they long for it, they're going to realize the fashion on me, why are things improving around me? Hmm, the people around me are sabotaging. Then the public's exposed. So social mobility upwards, it does happen, but the public will only tolerate if they have something on you to do to sabotage or blackmail you. If you have social mobility upwards and it's not no sabotage nor Blackmail you, nobody wants that to happen. Okay? So, again, society is organized violence. Because, for example, someone slaps you in the face. You think I'm going to slap them back. But when you slap them back, someone else comes to slap you, saying, You shouldn't slap back. You should come to me, let me deal with it. Well, that's how it works in societies. You're not allowed to um, retaliate with violence, which is understandable because if everyone keeps retaliating with violence, everyone ends up killing one another. However, in society, nobody cares about the truth, nobody cares about justice, people just care about being at ease. People want structural ease in society. So for that to happen, there must be normalized behavior which leads to predictable outcomes. People want predictable outcomes so they can feel like they're in charge. That's the, the, the fact of following guy. You want to feel like you're in charge. So if everyone acts the same way, then you can predict what's likely to happen. So to do this, there's organized violence in that society, in that um, in the population to keep everyone this normalized behavior, okay? And the only way this can work is if the authorities have the biggest weapons available, whether it's prison, whether it's police officers, whether it's criminals that are work for them. Because look, if you tell someone, um, don't walk, uh, don't walk in that building. And they walk in the building anyway, you have nobody to kick them out, so guess what? You tell them not to walk in that building, it's in pathetic, because they just walk in and out. But if you have a gun, or you have security officers to kick them out, now you have something to enforce it. You see what I mean? So society insists on enforcing this normalized behavior, and to do that, they must have a leverage over you, either sabotage you, so it makes worse onto you, or to completely shut you down for any other options. So society, it's built to put you in financial confinement. Without financial confinement, this whole thing of society cannot work. All right? Because society has this winner versus lose mentality. They operate in lack. You're either a winner by being one of us or you're a loser by not existing. So understand this. Society is when adults in the world want to escape together they submit to organized violence, they even participate in organized violence, so they can have predictable outcomes, which they see as security, quote unquote. And for that predictable outcomes, everyone is forced into normalized behavior through ritual victimization, which causes dormant psychological fright in everyone, which leads to sexual dysfunction. And people are kept in financial confinement to make sure they don't have any options in life. I mean, let's do it like this. Let's say you want to buy chicken, okay? Let's say if a restaurant over there and one over there. Now you can choose which restaurant you go to because they both have chicken. If this one is more, it's cheaper, but the stuff is horrible. You say, you know what? I don't want to deal with the rude stuff over there. I'm going to go over there. It's more expensive, but I get good service. But let's say it was only one restaurant that still sold chicken. Now you have nothing to choose. Whether the stuff is rude or not, doesn't matter. It's the only place you get chicken. Okay? So, if, you, if, there's more, if there are more options, you have a le if you have more, more options, you have more leverage. But okay, let's look at it differently. Let's say someone has a farm, okay, and needs people to clean his farm. 
Let's say there are, over, there are hundreds of people ready to clean the farm. You're one of them. Do you have a leverage now with that employer? No, you don't. Because if you walk away, he has maybe four or 500 people willing to uh, come and do the job for him. So the employer has a leverage over you because he has so many options to choose from. And if you don't really have an income, then he has more leverage over you. I mean, if you can get a job easily, you just walk into a building, then the, then the guy, that farmer has no leverage over you. But if you need a job and you can't find a job, and the guy has hundreds of people who can do the same like you, he has, he has some, some leverage over you. So if you get a job, you, you have to put up with his behavior or whatever because hey, he has a leverage over there. So having options means you have a leverage, also a leverage over other people. But here's the issue. People are not um, sure where your leverage that you have, you will use it at their benefit. So in the world, that's a fright people have. When someone has a leverage, are they going to use it for my benefit or not? Well, in the world, often people use their leverage for, the, for what they pursue, and often it causes collateral damage to others. So that people want you to consider them, there's nothing wrong with it. But here's the problem with society. Society always expects you to consider them, but they continue as an option. And if you challenge that, uh, they want to silence you by mark you for death. That's a public killing. Already made another live stream about it. Okay, let me see if there are any comments already. Hold on. So, this society. So for this abomination over here, which is based on the mythology that the public is innocent and they're victimized by a few bad guys, this thing over here, you are stuck in financial confinement, you're psychologically traumatized, you have dormant psychological flight that nobody wants to talk about. And they want predictable outcomes, so everything stays the same. So in such a setting, can you have a sudden, a sudden great outcome without uh, retaliation? Let me know in the live chat. Can you have a sudden great outcome in this setting without the counter retaliation? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know. Let me know what you think. What do you think? Let me know in the live chat. Okay, I got one answer, but what else is the rest saying? All right. I don't get many answers for some reason, but okay. Um, many of you are not, didn't understand what I asked. Okay. Again, you have a setting where the public is submitted to organized violence. They want predictable outcomes, so no flexibility. They insist on normalized behavior because all want the ease they expect to come from predictable outcomes. People are in a financial confinement, operating in dormant psychological fright. In this setting, anytime you have a great outcome coming for you, you are disrupting the public ease. You are disrupting the excuses of the public. So no, you cannot have a great outcome in such a setting without retaliation. It doesn't exist. You can be ahead of the retaliation so that you counter it before it even begins, but the retaliation will be there. That's why Jesus said offense will come. People will get upset if you take action against your life. Jesus said offense will come. And Christ said, a slave not above his master, if they persecute me, they'll persecute you. Simple as that. So for society, only these things count as good news. Victims are silenced, so they can't expose anything. The public is excused for the bad thing that happens. Or 
the bad guys are punished, so because they blame everything on the quote unquote bad guys, or this public amnesia, we just forgot about some, some controversy. These are what the public will consider good news, because that means they continue with their ease without having to face anything. The moment you break through, you are succeeding despite established resistance. It's established resistance. Again, as I already explained, or it's shutting down public rage against your autonomy. Anyway, you are disrupting the public ease. So if you are disrupting the public ease by bringing up this financial confinement, or better said, by overcoming this dormant psychological fright, when you overcome this, then it's very easy to, have, uh, to break out of financial confinement. The moment you're out of financial confinement, your options in life increase. And because your options increase, you are less dependent and less bound to the organized violence of society. So you can opt out or counter the restrictions society puts on you. But that means now that you go, you, you disrupt the static expectations of the public. So the public will not be happy with this. They'll, because they want predictable outcomes. And you get out of this sexual post or this dormant psychological fright, and then obtaining uh, financial freedom is not part of predictable outcome. Because now you have to deal with your impact, whether you want it or not. And they're going to say, never ask your impact, you think you are, blah, blah, blah. They try to make themselves out of you by humiliating you and shutting you down. But it doesn't work. You're going to be marked for that, simple as that. So as a believer, we need to understand society is a pyramid scheme. There's zero flexibility, so no freedom whatsoever, and it's all about predictable outcomes the public is holding on to. And to achieve these predictable outcomes, they're willing to submit to organized tyranny. So you, at, well, you overcome, you, over, you being delivered internally and then achieving a brain, a brain of financial confinement is not going to be perceived as good news. Because now, no, now more people want better outcomes. And guess what? You're only going to have a better community if the people get better. But if nobody wants to face themselves, nothing gets better. And that's why you have to organize violence that serves as an excuse why nothing gets better. But if you break free from the organized violence, that means things can be better. It's just people don't want to be better. And this is for something people don't want. So your breakthrough will not be perceived as good news by society. It will not be. It will not be. As a believer, especially as a saint, you can divert negativity, you can send peace out of you in order to hinder and counter the retaliation will come against you. But understand, the retaliation will come, okay? So any believer who is at ease within society, they never face any issues, something's wrong with them. If you have a believer who's always in, in, in difficulty, they never have solutions, means that they are easy victims, so that's not good either. A true believer, will have clashes with society from time to time if they're truly uh, having breakthroughs. Because remember, a breakthrough is succeeding despite established resistance. Let's say you are, uh, let me give an example. Let's say you are an Indian guy, okay? And you grew up somewhere in some, let's say some Chinese neighborhood. In the Chinese neighborhood, you're welcome as an Indian guy, but you don't expect to have sex with a Chinese woman. That's off limits. Because the Chinese population wants to remain, quote, unquote, homogenous. If one day you come with your Chinese wife and you mix children with them, you think those people will be happy with you? No, because you broke through the established resistance against, against the mixing with the Chinese. So, if you express your desire to have a Chinese girl in that community as an Indian guy, you may even frown on you and try to discourage you. This is all about resistance. If they see you with one, they're gonna try to solve that relationship and try to attack you and her. You see what I mean? So there's established resistance against something you're doing. If you manage to do it anyway and you see some slight public resistance, that means you have a breakthrough. But breakthrough has disrupted the ease of public over there. 
Or let's say now that um, you live in, let's say, Sweden, and you have this right-wing party in, in, in power in, in power now in Sweden, and they want to limit immigration as much as possible, okay? And you are a migrant. You arrive in Sweden after this uh, party came into power. But now this is this public sentiment in Sweden, they don't want that many migrants around. And guess what? Let's say you're a migrant in Sweden, you have this right-wing party in place, the public wants to get there, uh, wants so many migrants to go, and guess what? You have your own multi-million dollar business in Sweden. And the main people work for your business are other migrants. So now, the migrants in Sweden, the climate is they want to make it as uncomfortable for them as possible so they would leave. So if in this context, you have a company, a military company, and many migrants work for you, do you think uh, the people of Sweden are going to, do you think the Swedish society is going to be happy with you? No, they wouldn't be. Why? Because their agenda is make migrants uncomfortable as possible so they will leave. You are a migrant, and migrants are only allowed to stay if you fully assimilate. Now, you are a migrant, you have a million dollar business, so you don't have to assimilate the Swedish culture. You're going to keep your own way of doing things. And now you also offer jobs to other migrants. So you are a, you are a factor of empowerment to the migrants. So the migrants think, hey, if I can't get a job with a Swedish employer, hey, I get a job with that guy over there who's a migrant too. And they go perfectly fine. We're good money. So now the Swedish society has a difficult time enforcing normalized behavior on all the migrant population. And you are seen as an obstacle because it's you an obstacle because you offer the migrants options. So what's going to happen next? Swedish society will take action against you to get you out so that they can have the structural ease. All right? So anytime you break through in life, anytime you break out of financial confinement, or anytime you heal and recover internally, anytime you break through, you have great things happening for you, it's a disruption of society. You will not be praised for it. But Rashid, what about those self-made millionaires? What about those self-help gurus out there? What about those influencers? Well, listen, all those people that are put on display by the world, they can be sabotaged and shut down anytime. So they operate under blackmail. That influencer on Instagram, which was making thousands of euros each week, if she would post anything exposing some public um, neglect, guess what's going to happen? The sponsorships, the sponsors who sponsor her would just withdraw the sponsorship and she wouldn't make any money anymore. Or Instagram can say, oh, you violate one of our community guidelines. They shut down her Instagram page. Guess what? Her, her career's influencer is over. Let's say you have this, um, see, this manager working at the bank. If he would hang out with people who, used, who actually are the victims of that society, and because of that, um, he, now sees, he now sees the other side of society, people at the bank will say, listen, you hang out with weird people that are considered bad by society, so you can't go back to the shop anymore, they can fire him. So what I'm saying is all these successful people that are put on display for you to listen to and self-help groups, whatever, all of them are compromised and all of them are under some type of blackmail. That's why they're there. That's why they will never speak out about the public's neglect. But Rashid, some of them are activists. Okay, some of those activists you see are controlled opposition. They're established there by society just to damage control the neglect of society. So let's take up someone who is quite firm uh, exposing um, pedophilia in the community. And this individual is in the open exposing pedophilia all the time. Why is this shut down? Why? Because the amount of victims of child, child molestation are so many that it's, it's too open, it's, it's an embarrassment. And if this embarrassment comes to the open for everyone to see and nobody talks about it, it's going to look worse on the community. So now they put out this puppet out there that exposes people feeling that so you think, hmm, there are good people in this community exposing things. Now you're at ease. Now you believe in the innocence of the masses again. They bring it back in mythology. Because if that agent was not there talking about the people in the community, you would realize you don't mean it. So many people have been traumatized as children sexually, but nobody talks about it. You would completely realize what the F am I dealing with. But because with this agent there, 
Nine to eight, there, there's some good in this community. So you, you, you calm down, you lower your guard, and you continue to try to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. Okay, at least you know you just you need, need to get out of there. Simple as that. Amen. So understand this. The only ones who are put on display for you to praise as success stories, whether they're scientists, pastors. Uh, celebrities, politicians, or activists, entrepreneurs, whatever, are those who are blackmailable, as I would say. Is that an English word? No. For those who are under blackmail. If they're not under blackmail and nobody can sabotage them, they won't, they won't get any time on TV, no radio, any other place. There are many believers who are active in trade. They accumulated big wealth, sometimes in the millions, but you don't see them on TV, you don't hear them on the radio. A lot of them aren't even on social media. If they are on social media, they keep themselves quite hidden. And guess what? You may think, whoa, these are believers who did trade and they accumulated millions? They're established? How come you never heard of them? How come no church talks about them? Why? Because they, quote unquote, violate the static expectation of society. That's why people, because no people cannot kill them off, they pretend like they don't exist. That's why. So understand, breaking through implies you go against established resistance and organized violence of the group. And this is why so many believers never break through, because they don't walk in the resurrection power of Christ, and because they don't walk in the resurrection power, they have no power to counter Retaliation. Retaliation will happen, whether you're a believer or unbeliever. The thing is, can you counter the retaliation? Pagans cannot counter retaliation. Pagans are only by positive retaliation by using charms. And even that will expire. But believers can actually counter retaliation and succeed no matter what. Believers can do that. But for that to happen, believers must walk in the resurrection power. And the only way you can walk in the resurrection power is by agreeing with Christ fully. How many believers out there are not agreeing with Christ if all this darkness in their head still? And now you want to go out there breaking through, it's not going to happen. That's why so many believers, right before they break through, they either die of some disease, or they get crippled, or uh, they, they get falsely accused of something. So many believers almost make, never make it in life here and here and now, because they don't walk in the resurrection part of Christ. Christ said, I gave you power to trample on scorpions and serpents and all kinds of the enemy, and none shall by no means hurt you. Not shall do hurt you only comes if you walk in the power. If you don't walk in the power, that cannot apply to you. Simple as that. You also need to know what you're dealing with. Your breakthrough is bad news to society. It is bad news. And many people will not say to your face, they're not happy for you. They'll pretend to be happy for you so it doesn't look bad on them. But behind the scenes, they're cursing, hope you will fail, hope you will die, hope you will get crippled, hope you will this and that, we wish all this harm on you because they don't deal with your impact that they can't uh, say no to. As long as the public can say no to you and get away with it, they're fine with you. The moment you become a priority, they can't say no to, they have to deal with you, now they have a problem with you. Simple as that. When they try to make an example out of you and it backfires and humiliates them, but you keep succeeding anyway, you get marked for death and once you're gone. I'm explaining this all, explaining all this to you so you know what you're dealing with. In church, talk about great trust if it's a walk to the park. It's not a walking out. In a walking out, just open the door and you walk out smoothly. That's a walking out. It's not a walking out, it's a breakthrough. There's established resistance, you break through. That's what it is. And you can't remain on good terms with everyone with this. If you want everyone to be at good terms with you, which is a good thing, it's a good thing when everyone be at good terms with you. But in this world, it's not possible that everyone on good terms with you. Because if all these other people just want to escape, they don't want to minion as Jesus commanded us to have, and you want to minion, it's not going to be a match. All right? So, your breakthrough is bad news for society. So if you break through in life, it doesn't have to be a big breakthrough. Like you start your own business, like you have 
over 10,000 clients or you want to win the lottery, it's not something you should focus on. Anyway, it doesn't have to be something very big. And also simply be, you don't have any uh, condemnation anymore in your mind, or you don't have any addiction anymore. You know, it can be minor things. Whether it's a minor thing or a big thing, remember, society has zero flexibility. There's only society can function. You went for difficult outcomes that don't change. You change for the better, it's unpredictable. It doesn't fit the script of society. And because you violate the script, people are going to act out against you. So expect retaliation when you break through. I say this to all believers, expect retaliation when you break through. Who are you to think that you can just break through like that and all these people insisting on violence going to be okay with you? Now, if you walk in the resurrection part of Christ and you are known to be powerful, then you'll say, okay, we're upset with this, but let it happen. We try to hinder it in another way. But if you're new on the block and nobody knows you have power, they're going to try you out. Simple as that. Amen? Hold on, let me see. If there's any live chat over here. Okay, what Lishi said here is quite interesting. Let me just mark it for you guys. I mean, let me say, let me repeat what Lishi said. Some people have made up their mind a long time ago, even before you were born, that they will dedicate themselves to making life miserable for themselves. Indeed. Some folks just don't want solutions, just want to escape. So they've already embraced mystery. They've embraced misfortune. If these people embrace the misfortune even before you were born, what makes you think that you're born now as a little baby? They see you grow up as a little baby, now you're an adult and you break through and they, they're, they're going to change their mind for the better? No. They embrace misfortune. They cling on misfortune. Guess what? They were doing that even before you were born. Don't think that now that you're breaking through, suddenly they're going to change their mind for the better. Some will. Thank God for them, but many won't. So those that insist on cling on misfortune, they're going to explode on you. But because when you walk in the resurrection part of Christ, it can't successfully explode on you because you counter it. And you need to learn to counter things as a believer. I'm telling you. Amen? So do not pray or decree a breakthrough anywhere if you're not willing to endure the retaliation against you and then come out on the other side. Because you're disrupting the public's ease. So the public is going to feel like you're bothering them with your existence. No, they want you to be a disposable option on their terms, then they're okay with you. The public wants you to be a disposable option on their terms. If you're not a disposable option on their terms, they have a problem with you. And, but here's the thing, you're not a disposable option on their terms because it's not, they don't have anything to decide about that. Christ is Lord, he owns the earth, he owns all human beings on the earth, he runs human species, and he decides who has power and who doesn't. And he only has power for believers. The world has no power at all. The world only has a leverage they misuse. The misuse of leverage is violence. The world only has a leverage they misuse. Only the world has. The world has no real power. Believers have no power. And God decides which believer has how many power. So Christ in charge of who has power. The world has no power. Only have violence. That's why they want to traumatize you by making, ours, making you arts an example. They want to offer you some official rewards. And they want to silence anyone who questions it. That's how to keep you in financial confinement and you can do it as it because you are in a dormant psychological fright. All right? Which we all can call fear. So, are you ready to have a breakthrough? Now you know all that comes with a breakthrough. The breakthrough is worth it and it's beneficial for you. It's also beneficial for, uh, towards other people you will encounter. Some people who want solution, they, they keep holding on to the predictable um, mystery, but that's on them. Break through, expand as she is so expects you to, but no, the real retaliation can't wait it. So be ahead of retaliation. Don't wait till it happens. Don't think, oh Lord, help what goes on. No, no, no. Be ahead of it with decreased decorations, commands, all of that. And also adapt a better attitude so you can escape traps from the public. All right? So don't be too vocal with all your victories, don't be too vocal with all your steps about to do. No. Just be wise in the earth now, please. Amen. God is good. Let me check. Hmm, it's almost 50 minutes. Okay, let me see.
Let's see. Just like Kwasi, Kwasi is saying over here. That's why they chose to kill Christ over Barabbas. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the truth. Just think about it. Barabbas was a criminal. He was a murderer and a thief. Barabbas led the rebellion against Rome with the purpose of exploiting his own people. So Barabbas pretended to be a freedom fighter, but he only took advantage of his own people. He was, he was a horrible man, okay? He was about to be executed that day on the cross. Pilate offered an option. We want to be crucified. Jesus, when the guy's called king, who's going around healing people and, and building his own economy, or this Barabbas who took advantage of you and got many of your own people killed. They said, release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Well, let me tell you, the same thing many people are doing today. It may not, it's not the same situation that Jesus was in about being crucified and all that, but imagine, let's say uh, you have a job offer, okay? You apply for a job, you qualify for a job, you ask for a job. They still chose a candidate who's far less qualified than you. It's and, and to do what you know. That candidate is less qualified than you. It fits their zero flexibility, the static expectation test, right? Well, let's say you're married and your husband suddenly, suddenly cheats on you and leaves you. And when you look at the woman he's with now, she's far worse off than you are. You think, what? Did he on purpose don't read like that? Well, listen, because you're of, of quality, he has to be of quality too. And because he doesn't want to develop himself from the inside to be of quality, he's like, I don't have this. I'm going to drop her and look for someone who will tolerate my, my low quality. Same with you. Maybe your wife left you out of the blue or she suddenly um, decided to be with someone else. And you think what goes on. Nine out of ten times has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them wanting someone that can excuse their bullshit. That's why. And because you see their bullshit and you do something about it, they want to be around you. Simple as that. Amen. Okay, it says in the Bible, God, Jesus said, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Freedom means being able to function according to God's design fully without any hinder. That's freedom. Because operating God's design to the full, that's when you're happy, fulfilled, and you're safe. Anything that hinders that is not freedom. So in the world, you have the terms freedom and liberty. Freedom is when you completely out of dysfunction, completely out of misfortune, and things go fully well to you, that's, that's freedom. The other, the counterfeit to freedom is liberty. Liberty is when you get consent from the public to be a certain way. Maybe you're a woman, you don't have any children, you just party all the time, and you have a nine-to-five job and so you career. And you think you're free. No, you are in liberty. The public gives you consent to be that way. Let's say now you repent, you become a believer, and you become a powerful woman of God. They didn't want, don't want that. It's not the action against you. So liberty is when you have consent from the public to be a certain way. Freedom is when you are fully functioning according to God's design in which you, are, you have no more dysfunction, no more misfortune, and things go fully well with you. That's freedom. So when the sun sets you free, so when you we agree with Christ, you become truly free. Amen? All right, God is good all the time. Listen, we get along with people in society for practical reasons. We also listen to the laws of the land. Uh, we obey the traffic signs. We pay our taxes. So we do do our part, okay? But just because we do our part does not mean that we have to put up with every side comes up with. If you participate to your party, also have, you also have right to demand things. If they say, no, if they say that you have no, not to do the much to do your thing, I'm sorry, but you can say, uh, I'm, not, I'm not into this. I'm a human being too, I fell into just like you. You all depend on the sunlight, the moonlight, you all depend on the soil of the earth, right? So real guys. But anyway. A 
why do we talk about U.S. Constitution? Knowing it's a document that was written by slave owners who want to preserve their liberty, their benefits of liberty. If you rely on any, if you rely on any other um, testament, if you rely on any other testament, then the testament that Christ gave you is idolatry. So rely on the U.S. Constitution, right, or, or rely on the civil rights of your country, and it's idolatry, and you are bound to this force of society. Simple as this. Amen. But I understand this. When it comes to the human species, they haven't thought of science who has power. I'm not, I'm not talking about the leverage. In the world, people come together with the leverage and take advantage of other people. That's what they do in the world. That's violence. You can use your leverage over other people as long as it's constructive, okay? But when it comes to believers, God gives us power that we can use their life over other people and for the benefit of other people. God decides who has power. So this whole thing that everyone is functioning equal is not true. God gives more power to some than does to others. And people without Christ have zero power. They only have a leverage. That's why the world is obsessed with taking advantage of believers, especially saints, because they have no power. They only have a leverage they misuse, which is violence. Okay, uh, GAs, you have some some ideas so fair they're not in harmony with Christ, so please uh, uh, stop it for a moment. We're not supposed to evolve from the design that we follow, as simple as that. All right? Well, anyway, thank you all for being here. I need to go now. Thanks for watching this live stream. Keep up grooming Christ. Be at peace. And I'll see you next time. Remember, only in Christ is the real freedom. Amen.